go. <gasps> Where have I landed? I'm on my winter fly around. I've landed in Dardar's garden. Holy fairy goddess. Even though it's winter here, there's still so many things we can do with herbs. In fact, we're not quite as overwhelmed because there's just a few winter stars that are out there. I'm gonna feel my magic wand. I'm gonna see where we end up. Where I'm going past the broccoli. <gasps> oh my god! We have landed on the rosemary plant. Let's take a closer look. See how rosemary is blooming in winter. What a hearty soul you are. We love you, Rosemary. We are so glad to be hanging out with you on our winter fly around. A rosemary starts with the letter R. And so does the word remembrance. Because rosemary has been long known for its ability to help you remember things. Now, I don't know if you have a problem remembering things. Oh, you might know someone that does. Have a cup of rosemary tea help you to remember. In fact, it's so good on memory that it also has been recent fairy journals, if you've been reading them, uh, lets you know that rosemary has been used to prevent Alzheimer's and stroke. And if you have anybody in your family or if you have that in your history, you might want to just have a cup or two of rosemary tea every day. It's a little, it's, it has a, an interesting taste, but just try it out. Take like about a teaspoon of this in a cup of water and let it steep for 10 to 15 minutes and you'll have yourself a good cup of memory tea. It's also an amazing herb for the liver. Who knew? The liver and it can um, help wash away those excess hormones that kind of get stuck around in the body, it's flowing around. So it can really help you um, apparently to prevent breast cancer. Well, that's a good thing. And we can also use it uh, to calm down. I don't know if anybody out there is stressed. Uh, we don't know about stress in Fairyland. However, I've heard from some letters and the little emails I've got that some people are under stress. So try rosemary for stress. Also try it for headaches. Amazing herb. Again, the cup of tea. But when you, you don't want to drink tea anymore, you can also make it into a smudge stick. Use rosemary as a smudge in your house for mental clarity and calmness. Makes an incredible smudge and a beautiful one too. I just want to touch it and smell it. Oh my goddess. Oh, I'm going crazy now. Oh my goodness. Feel the potency of that rosemary. I'm just going to, if you've got your smelloscope on, if you just inhale to that, and you can feel the energy of the rosemary and the smell. And that reminds me of another thing. When you walk by a rosemary bush and you rub it all over you, it actually helps your hair to grow. I mean, the other way to do it is you can get the essential um, oil of rosemary and put it in your hairbrush and then brush your hair, brush it through your hair. Really nice, helps the hair to grow. And you can also um, just rub the essential oil on it from when you're bypassing a plant like I just did because I'm really working on, you know, my long fairy locks. And, uh, and just inhaling it can improve your mood. I mean, fairies are usually in a good mood anyhow, but just in inhaling it, and they've done studies, inhaling rosemary helps your cognitive ability, and, and if you wanna like check it out in your like, normal like computer world, uh, people improve their math skills from inhaling rosemary. Isn't that cool? Um, fairies don't do a lot of math, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that does. Oh, oh, I'm gonna just bathe my magic wand in it for a minute, because you can remember where to go, this is sort of like a fairy GPS, a magic wand with memory. <laughs> we need that. Oh, okay, here we go, on our fly around. What's over there? Oh, I see calendula. We're on our way. Calendula, it's actual Latin name, is Calendula officinalis. And what does the word 
how Lendula sound like. It has the word calendar in it, which means that it blooms almost any month of the calendar. So that, uh, uh, the Latin name is often connected up to something about the plant. The other thing, this beautiful bright orangeness, it's sort of like bottling the sun. That's how I feel about calendula. It's very high in that carotenoids, which gives it this orange color, and that helps with free radical damage. So I put it in my face cream to get the herbal fairy face skin, and it helps to fight the free radical damage, which gives you wrinkles and makes you look like a really old fairy. That's why you can look like a really young fairy all the time. Isn't that nice? Then you have more strength for your fly arounds, and it's very important. Um, it also is very smooth. Any kind of inflammation or soreness or weirdness or redness, as you can see, very smooth fairy skin because actually calendula on my face in my fairy cream every day. And I have ever since I was just a little tiny fairy. Um, but it's also good for burns. Calendula is really known for being good for burns. So you can put it in any kind of um, ointment that you're going to use for birds. And it's very, very gentle for children. And if you take it as a tea, it actually has some antiviral and antibacterial qualities as well. Because one thing we want to uh, help convey to you that you often think of a plant in a certain way, but there's many, many ways to use the same plant. In fact, there's probably a hundred ways to do the same plant. And often we get stuck in just thinking one thing. So it's good to open up your mind to other my smelloscope and my wand, my memory wand. I am liking this memory wand. Mm. Oh, right here now. Oh, wow. Sometimes in the smallest places you see the most things. This here is barrage. Now you probably can't see it too well, but I want you just to get a closer look at what a little baby barrage looks like. This makes beautiful purple flowers in the uh, summertime. And it is known, it rhymes with the word courage. So barrage can give you courage. It's a relative of comfrey. And it's a great plant to grow for the bees. If you love bees like my friend Dardar does, because we're in her garden today, uh, just please grow some barrage in your garden. It's very easy. It likes to grow from seed. It doesn't really want to be transplanted. But then you can put the beautiful little star flowers in your ice cubes and have a glamorous garden party. Okay, we're still flying here. Zoom de doom de doom de. Holy, holy goddess. Here we have garden sage. I mean, it's in its winter mode. But we'll just take a close look at it anyhow. Feeling the winter sage here. This is um, typical garden sage. And I have to tell you, the first healing I ever had with herbs involved this sage. And I used it for a gargle with, as a, uh, for a sore throat. Mmm. Mm, you to get your smell scopes on. Inhale that. Mm, so nice. And then many years ago when I was in uh, Costa Rica and I had an asthma attack and I went to the, the local healer, uh, she had me on this sage tea so fast. And I wasn't having asthma. It's not good for an acute attack, but it really helped. That whole um, queasiness, not queasiness, wheeziness in my lungs that I had for like two weeks. I took two cups of this every day with two teaspoons of honey. And it was hard to find that local healer, but she was in between the post office and the jail. So I guess that's where healers live, because they, they help everybody. They send things away and they help people that, you know, are kind of locked up in many ways. So I've never forgotten that. Um, and the other thing is the sage, it's just so hardy. This is like what we call a hardy perennial. Really great to have strong plants in your garden. That, you, that come up over and over again, that they practically grow themselves. So, just take a look at it. Okay, we're just listening to our wand. I feel a flying coming on. There we are. There's catnip. We'll just get a real close look at this catnip. That is catnip. Now, you may think catnip is just for cats, 
It's not. It's for fairies and people too. Because catnip helps you calm down. It's one of the best nervines you can ever find. So if you want to drink a cup of like catnip tea, you will be smiling like a Cheshire cat. You will be so happy. I'm just going to pick a little bit and, and, and have a bite and then you'll see what happens. Okay, one second. I'll be right back. If you can possibly see the square stem, catnip is in the mint family. So it's going to have those beautiful flowers later on, but here it is, right in the middle of winter. You can calm down with catnip. <sighs> Keep your nip close and you'll feel good and calm. Oh, I love this plant. I hope you try that. Tea. And there's another one also called cat mint. Uh, the Latin name is Napita, Cata area for this one. And the other one, it has, it's like Tusilago Farfarar. I'm not saying it right, but I'm sure once you Google it, they correct everything. Thank God is for Google. <sighs> wow, now that I'm less relaxed, I think it's time to go take a little berry nap. I'm going to find a flower to rest on. <gasps> but I still feel a mild flying coming on. Fly away to the very